Microphones are becoming more and more cheap and available to everybody today. There's microphones from $10 to three to $400 available right now on the Amazon Marketplace. This microphone in particular by Mauno, which is about $50. Pairing that with the Manocaster G1 Neo, it becomes a pretty substantial combo for beginners on a budget. Full disclosure, this microphone and the interface was sent to me by Mauno, but I'm not asked to make a review based on their opinion. I'm fully unbiased in this. I've tested and reviewed this device for myself, and I'm pretty happy to share all the information I've learned about this device. Starting with the PD100X, it's a pretty solid combo with the microphone by itself. You have all these extra functions built in that you're able to utilize for streaming, audio recording, or any audio need. It's got that really good crisp podcast sound quality, which a lot of people are looking for. It's a cardioid polar pattern, a dynamic microphone, which means that it's not powered or require phantom power. It also has volume control and a mute button above that. Underneath of it, you have the XLR out as well as the USB-C and then the RGB functionality control. Last but not least, there is a headphone jack there so you can connect your headphones out to listen to your microphone as you're talking into it. One cool feature that I think a lot of people really enjoy about this microphone at this price is it has the RGB functionality. That means that this microphone itself, when plugged into USB-C, has really cool RGB. You're able to see illumination through the entire microphone whenever it's plugged in. So really cool option for those that are looking for RGB. Out of the box, it also comes with this stand and a foot to be able to mount the stand directly onto your desk. This means that you're able to just sit on your desk and move it around back and forth where needed. Me personally, I use desk audio arms, so I don't have a need for that, but it is a good option if you want something portable or removable on the fly. Overall, I think the quality is really good on this microphone. It's got really crisp, clean bass and really nice mids and lows. I definitely think it's really good quality. One thing I do say about this microphone, uh, the audio quality, seems to be a little stronger than the other microphones that I have. With this microphone in particular, it has really good pickup. It's almost too good that sometimes it picks up audio I don't really wanna pick up. It also seems to pick up a lot more pop than the other microphones I've used, such as the Rode Procaster. So just keep that in mind. As long as you're a safe distance away from the microphone, it doesn't seem to be an issue, but Whenever recording or using this microphone, definitely keep in mind that you want to fine tune and get the actual distance of the microphone you want before using it in a live stream. Another con for me is the build quality. It is a very plasticky build quality. With pretty much all the microphones I've had up to this point, they've all been constructed with an aluminum body. With this one, it's more of a plastic body, which is probably how they were able to cut the cost down to just 50 bucks. And also by allowing it to be plastic, they're able to utilize this translucent plastic for the RGB to glow through. Me personally, even if it's a plastic exterior, I'd love to feel some more weight within the body itself so it feels more sturdy and reliable. The microphone stand is pretty solid. I do find that the snob right here tends to come loose and when it does, it kind of doesn't go back in place. So there is a little bit of adjustment you'll have to do over time to make sure that it does stay fixed. But I do like the one-sided arm. Last but not least, I think with the RGB, for me, it's not a necessary thing to have with my microphone, but for those who are looking to use this as their main microphone and want to have the RGB functionality, when connecting to an interface through XLR, you do lose the RGB capability. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but for some people, it might be a deal breaker with this microphone. Overall, I would definitely recommend it at this price. You get really good quality as well as functionality with this microphone, and it's essentially all you'll need to get started with really good quality audio. Moving on to the Mountocaster G1 Neo, it has a bunch of functions built in that I never really thought to ask for or needed until I have it now. They've done a really good job at finding things that people need when using audio devices that many audio interfaces I've had don't use. Starting off from left to right on the button configuration, you have the 48 volt button or phantom power button. It's pretty self-explanatory, but for those that don't know, phantom power is necessary for many microphones, such as the condenser microphone here, the NT1. In order for the microphone or condenser microphone to work, it needs to have that 48 volt phantom power to be able to turn on and start picking up audio. Having this button just allows you different options of microphones and capabilities. For instance, if I want to swap this one over to a condenser microphone like the NT1, I'm able to do that with ease. Underneath the 48 volt button is a microphone fader. This allows you to control the volume input and output of the microphone directly from the soundboard itself. And underneath of that is the mute button, which mutes the audio from the microphone input. 
Moving on is the Bluetooth button. This is a really cool feature because you're able to pair your mobile device or other device via Bluetooth to play music directly into your audio interface. This allows it to be more hands-free and less cables roaming around on your desk. Really cool function and I really appreciate it. This is pretty cool because you have the option to use Bluetooth or auxiliary in on this one channel. And on that one channel is one fader which allows you to control the auxiliary in. Underneath of that is the auxiliary in mute button. Going over is the gain knob. The knob is essentially just to add more power to your microphone. Most microphones like the condensers don't require this, but with microphones like the dynamic microphones here, which don't have that extra power, it's a really great option to boost the audio levels of the microphone so you're able to control and get more power out of your dynamic microphones. Next to that is the reverb function. This is gonna be the sound of an echo or when your voice bounces off the walls in a large room. This is gonna be a really cool feature for those that like to use the audio for recording music or vocals and sing karaoke. So you'll see a lot of this in that type of function. And the last knob is the headphones knob. This is essentially the knob that controls the volume that comes out of the interface into your headphones. This for me is the best option for fine tuning your audio when using audio interfaces and helps you to find the best quality and how it sounds in live streaming or audio recording. Under those knobs is a set of buttons. These are pretty simple setups, but really cool function, which allows you to do different things where needed. Mostly for dynamic microphones, because they're essentially noise reducing microphones already, you don't really need this button or functionality, but with microphones such as the condensers or other microphones that do pick up a lot of extra audio, it's nice to have. So this is how my voice sounds like without the noise reducer. This is the first option noise reducer, which you can kind of tell cuts off the beginning of my audio before talking. This is the second, a little bit more cut out in the beginning of my audio before talking. And this is back to default. The next button is sidechain. Sidechain is a pretty substantial change for me and I think it's a really good option that is available to us. Essentially what it does is when having two audio coming in at the same time, microphone and auxiliary in, when talking, the auxiliary will automatically lower its level and as soon as you stop, it'll go back to the normalized level that you have set on your device. So pretty cool option if you want to do hands-free streaming and not have to go between your mouse and keyboard to the faders and control the volume in order for you to kind of lower it and raise things. So really cool option. I think it's a really cool feature available. Definitely recommend this if you need that option because it does keep your hands free and it's just a really cool feature to have. The RGB functionality is pretty self-explanatory. It just allows you to add different RGB options as well as what color you want to set it to or even turn it off on the interface itself. We also have the voice changer, which is pretty cool. You have four different options. Option one is female. Option two is male. Option three is baby. Option four is robot. And then back to default. Pretty cool. For many of those that like to have that voice changer capability for, I don't know, creating trolling YouTube videos or whatever purpose you would have, it's really cool that you have that option available. And I like to have fun with it with the kids sometimes when we're playing gaming. Moving on, we have the direct monitor button. This is really useful if you want to turn the audio coming in from your microphone, as well as your auxiliary in straight up to your headphones or the direct monitor. For me, I like to have my microphone audio in my headphones at all times, but for some people it can be a bit distracting having to hear yourself or hear your audio overtake the audio in game. So definitely a good option if you want to be able to have that capability. Underneath of those buttons are four extra buttons, which are your loop buttons. And they just allow you to create preset audio built into the buttons itself. For instance, me, I, I just added some preset recorded silliness. By pressing and holding, pressing one more time, you're able to record quick audio and then press it to close the audio track recording. And then it allows you to replay that audio really easy. For example, this is button one. Beep, beep, button two. So really cool feature. It's kind of silly, but definitely useful if you have other needs or loop reasons for that. But yeah, that is the audio interface review for today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. If there's things that I didn't cover that you guys have information for, feel free to leave in the comments below as well. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Got him. Got him. Let's go, boys. I need to show that girl to a
Dude, I feel like the pistol There's another team. There's another team though, okay? Get ready. Uh, right in front of us, right in front of us. Okay, Come on, guys. 